who's today's speaker, Sonia. She is a second year medical student and content creator who creates educational content tailored for both pre-med and fellow medical students. And despite her demanding nature of medical school and her involvement in various activities, she has effectively managed her time to ensure it does not interfere with her studies. And she is here today to share some of those tips for aspiring medical students. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Sonia. Hi, everyone. I hope everybody is doing OK. Um, as she mentioned, I'm a second year medical student and I'm super excited to be giving this talk. I am a like firm believer of like you can balance both school and medical school. And that like stemmed a little bit from what I experienced in undergrad. So I'll just give you guys a little backstory before we like get into the actual presentation. During my first semester of undergrad, I was a biology major. Um, that first semester, those first couple of weeks, I restricted myself from like anything fun. So I was like, I'm not going to watch Netflix. I'm not going to do anything to take care of myself. I'm just going to focus on school and do the best I can. Um, and if you have taken general chemistry by now, you know how hard it can be. And that like made me to like start second guessing myself and I started having panic attacks before <laughs> every general chemistry exam and after it I would feel so terrible and I would just like feel like not good so this one time I was talking to my advisor and she just asked me how I was doing and I literally just broke down in tears and I was just like crying you know hyperventilating and after that talk she told me to take time for myself she was like go to your dorm don't do anything today and just like relax. And so I think it's very important as a student to find some type of outlet aside from school. Do something that makes you happy. Do something that you love. Because what I learned was that if I was not doing the things I loved, if I was restricting myself from having fun and like even taking time to self-care, that could impact my studies. And learning that lesson at a very early point in my like career allowed me to like prioritize taking care of myself so I've been doing that ever since then and I can tell you I have been the happiest both educationally and socially and emotionally so I hope this talk is like going to help you and the one thing I want to get I want you to get out of this talk is that you can balance it you know you just have to find what works for you and stick to it so thank you guys for joining me today and I hope to like provide some type of value and give you guys a sense of how to create a study routine that's gonna help you both in class and outside of the classroom so with that I'm gonna like share my screen right now um okay share screen and you guys can let me know if you see the screen or not give me a second Okay. Ready? So. Can you see my screen? I see your screen, but not the presentation yet. Yep, yep. now we can see it. Okay, all right. So welcome to today's talk about time management and study techniques for medical school success. My name is Sonia Chalke and I'm a second year medical student. Um, so a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Cameroon, West Africa. I moved here at the age of 15 and I went to high school, then college and now medical school. Um, my family and I are currently seeking asylum, but aside from, you know, school, right? I'm a second year medical student. I love creating content. I actually started creating content during my gap year. And the reason why I started was as an asylum seeker, I didn't really see any other asylum seekers out there talking about their journey through college and also in medical school. So I felt like it was my opportunity to use my story and my experiences to be able to help those coming after me or anybody that may feel the same way or is in that same position. And that was how I like started creating content on like medical school application interviews. And during my medical school application, I was able to be successful, which is why I'm here in medical school right now. 
I love to work out. I try to work out three times a week because it's, it's like I mentioned at the beginning, it's my self, my form of self-care. So working out is very important to me. I have consistently continued to work out despite being in medical school and despite being busy. Um, I also love spending time with my family. I come from a very big family, um, a single parent household. And I love my siblings. I love spending time with them. I love spending time with my mom. And just like being able to like interact with them has been really good. And I also stay at home going to medical school. So that has allowed me to have 24, 24 seven with my family. Um, when I'm not studying or working out or doing content creation, I love to watch reality TV. Love is blind. I haven't watched The Bachelorette or like Love Island yet, but I like watching Netflix right now. I'm actually watching Emily in Paris and I actually love the show. I also love watching movies. I like to watch anime as well. Um, I love to travel and see new places. I actually discovered this during my gap year, although in medical school, I haven't been able to travel a lot. But during my summer, I was able to visit two new states, um, Texas and New York. Um, also, just let me know if I'm like talking too fast. You know, you can put in a comment. Feel free to like unmute yourself and just let me know to like slow it down just so you guys could follow along as well. Um, OK, so my medical school journey, right? I came here at the end of 10th grade and I did 10th and 11th and 12th grade year in the U.S. I applied to college and I got in. I was a biology major. I attended the University of Akron. It's in Ohio. And there I graduated with my bachelor's degree in three years. So going into college, one of my goals was to graduate college in three and a half years or less. And I was able to do that in three years. I would just say for that, whatever goal you have to accomplish throughout your college career, write it down and like take time to accomplish those goals and prioritize your schedule is going to allow you to be successful both in and outside of the classroom. Um, during my gap year, I actually studied for the MCAT and I submitted my medical school application before even taking my MCAT score. And then after my MCAT score came back, I was able to submit that score. And um, the rest is history. I got two acceptances and I finally chose to go to the medical school that I'm currently attending. Also during my gap year, I worked as a clinical research coordinator and basically what you do is you focus on clinical research. So research involving drug trials is basically research on human subjects. So if there's a new medication, I worked in pediatrics and oncology. So they're mostly testing like chemotherapy drugs on little kids to see how it works. And if this was a good treatment, then it could potentially become like the main drug of choice. So I really enjoyed Working as a clinical research coordinator, it allowed me to see a little bit more into research, but it also allowed me to get more hands-on clinical experience, which are some of the things you need to apply to medical school. Um, okay, so a little bit about day in the life of a medical student, my day, right? Um, I go to lecture and we usually have lecture from like 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., so I come to lecture, like today I was in class all day up to 12. After lecture, I would have lunch. Um, and then after lunch, I would stay in the library till about 5.30ish. And then from there, I would go to the gym. And I usually try to spend about an hour in the gym. And then after working out for an hour, I would stay on campus for two more hours to try to get any type of work done. If I have to do some Anki cards, some practice questions, I would do those. And then I will go home afterwards, you know, take a shower, reset, and then the cycle begins all over again the next day. Um, okay, so medical school, right? Medical school is a lot. The reason why it's a lot is because you're learning so much in a short period of time, right? I am, so during my first semester of medical school, you have about 27 credits, right? So the first semester, we had four systems, and the systems are basically like a course that you take. So we started our first system out with 
biochemistry. You learn everything about biochemistry in like six weeks, right? And so I basically learned my entire biology degree in six weeks. That's crazy, right? Something that took me three years to get. I learned it all in the span of six weeks. So I think the most challenging thing about medical school is really the fast pace of medical school. And you have to find study routines that are going to work for you and do things that are going to work for you. So it's like a try and error. You figure out what works. And then if something isn't working, you change it. So Human Blueprint was really a learning curve for me, right? You know, I took a year off. One of the, I was actually worried that would I be able to like get back into the zone and like do well. But, you know, took a year off, was in medical school. You know, you start out your first system. You're pretty nervous. You're like, okay, what do I do? How do I study? How do I figure it out? So for me, I was like, all right, I'm going to go to lecture. And after lecture, if I don't understand something, I'm going to like do practice questions about it. Um, one of the reasons why I actually chose to do practice questions was when I took the MCAT, I didn't really perform as good as I wanted it. So I was like, all right, coming into medical school, you have to take certain classes and you have to take step one and step two. And those are basically your licensing exams. And so I was like, to set myself up for success, I'm going to try to do as much practice questions as I can. So we started off the system with human blueprint and then we moved to immunology. Immunology is where you learn all about your basically your immune system, so your adaptive and your innate immune system. And then we went to hematology and oncology, which was about cancer physiology, cancer biology, anything that has to do with blood and like cancer cells. And then you had infectious disease, which is microbiology, right? So you have to learn various drugs that treat various viruses and bacteria and parasites. So you're learning all of this basically in the span of a semester. And that is a lot. It's a lot and you can get burnt out. You can get drained if you're not taking care of yourself. So really also finding ways and techniques to be able to manage the workload, making sure you're taking care of yourself and also making sure you're doing well, right? Because if you flung, they're going to be like, oh, you have to repeat this semester. And Medical school is also very expensive, so you want to try to, like, do everything on the timeline so you're not paying as much by, like, repeating another semester. So our second semester was three systems. We had neuro, MS, um, neuro, neuroscience and then musculoskeletal, so you learn about your bones and your muscles. And then your last semester, your last system is psychiatry, so behavior, you learn about depression and all of the other diseases that human that happens in the human mind um so in total I took 55 credits in one year and that is a lot right and your system range anywhere from three weeks to eight weeks so you're learning so much content in just a short amount of time and I wanted to I put the slide slide here so you guys can actually see like yes the workload is a lot and if you're not doing things to make make things easier for yourself you might fall behind. Honestly, one thing I've heard a lot of medical students say, and I say this myself, is like, you always feel like you're catching up and you just have to stay afloat to be able to make it to the end, right? And if you go to medical school someday, they're going to tell you that it's like drinking out of a fire hose so much, right? Um, so, okay. Yeah, we're going to get into the meat and butter of this presentation, like your study resources, your study techniques, right? So on this slide, here are some of the things I use. I primarily use lectures. So going to class, listening to the professors, writing it down. I have a little book. I'm just going to show you guys. So I have a little book where I kind of summarize everything from each slide into this book into like a one page paper and it just allows me to be able to see if I actually do understand the concepts and like track what like what is going on is this making sense or if it's not if I'm not able to like write it or if I have to think a little bit more about it then I'm like all right maybe I need to go back to study this right so another resource I used was osmosis osmosis is a platform that has videos it also has practice questions. You can make flashcards on it. 
So these are also some of the things you can use in your undergrad right now, right? So you can make flashcards. If you are somebody who studies best with flashcards, you can do that. And that what it does is it's space repetition. So you're basically seeing the material every day, every other day, every two days. It allows you to keep track of it, right? And the good thing about technology is that there's so many things out there that people have created that you don't even have to like invent the wheel. So if you're not somebody who likes writing notes down, you can literally go online, look up a YouTube and you'll find everything you need on there. Another popular tool that a lot of students are using right now is Anki. And Anki is basically like pre-made flashcards that you do every single day for space repetition. And the best thing about this is it allows you to study things that you've learned months ago. Because like as a student, you don't necessarily always have time to go back to those lecture slides or go back to the textbook to be like, I need to go through every single thing in the span of like a week because usually we go through a system and you only have about two days to actually prepare for a final. So it's like, how do you recall and remember all the things you've learned like five weeks ago or six weeks ago? So just like having those good study routine is really, really important, right? And I think for me, the biggest thing I've figured out is like, what works for me? What can I do that works for me? It doesn't necessarily have to work for anybody else, but what? how do I study best, right? How am I able to understand the concepts and review it in such a way that I can be able to apply this when I'm being asked a question, right? Um, other resources I use are Dirty Medicine. Dirty Medicine is actually free. It's on YouTube. You can look up whatever thing you have like embryology, if you're struggling with embryology, pharmacology, you can look those up and they have great videos. Another thing is Sketchy and Sketchy is like a cartoon, right? So this company came up with cartoons that they make little associations with to be able to allow you to recall um, information and things that you've studied. So sometimes I'll be taking an exam and I'll sit there and I'll like try to picture the Sketchy that I watch and it kind of it's like a memory palace, right? So you're sitting in a place that you have in your brain that allows you to recall things. And those are some techniques that you can use. So another resource I use is MetBullets. They have practice questions. It's also free. Like you can get it, you can get a certain number of questions for free. And what you have to do is when you're studying, you cannot just study, 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 right? You need to understand, like, I'm actually understanding the concept. And so what practice questions do is they allow you to see your weak points, right? Because you may learn every single thing. You may know every single thing. But if you don't know how to answer a question on it, if it's asked in multiple different ways, then you probably don't know that subject as much as you think. So really doing practice questions is really effective, really beneficial for me. I've seen the benefit of doing practice questions. I try to do five daily questions on osmosis and every single day I go on there and I try to do five questions. I don't look at my notes, I don't look at the book, I just try to do it off of my memory. So active recall, I'm sitting over there and thinking of what I've learned and I'm trying to put those together to be able to answer the question. Um, another really good resource is Scholar RX. Um, if you're planning to go to medical school, you're planning to take STEP or USMLE, USMLE RX is step one. And then Comlex is for DO schools. This is really a good resource. Um, but as a pre-med student as well, like practice questions are really important. So professors usually tell you to get like a textbook. What textbooks have is they have practice questions. So if you're not understanding something, you can go into the textbook and you can look at it and you can make sure like, okay, can I answer these questions, right? And see how much progress you're making. Um, another thing I would say as a pre-med student is do not be afraid to open your textbook. I know there were times that I didn't understand general chemistry or organic chemistry. And I went back to my textbook to read it and to go over it to see how does it make sense and then brought those questions to my professors to ask them, can you please answer this? I went over it and I wasn't able to understand it. So how does this play out, right? So here are some of the study techniques I've kind of already touched on. Practice questions. You want to be doing practice questions. You want to be understanding the question and how it's being asked and being able to answer it. Memory palace. You can, for myself, my notebook is my memory palace. I write topics in there and it allows me to be able to recall stuff. 
Active recall is you're basically trying to get the answer without looking at your notes. Another thing people do is blurting. They basically just take a whiteboard and they write out everything they know about that topic. And so it it's still a form of active recall and it allows you to be able to like see where are the gaps in my memory, right? Other people use the Feynman technique where it's like, is that the Feynman technique or is it the Pomodoro? Where you do like 30 minutes on, you take a 10 minute break, you come back and you do that. I don't do that. I usually just like from this, the techniques I've told you, I do those instead. And then I also use space repetition, flashcards, Anki. Um, my advice for you, if you're starting out college, you're starting out a new class, um, you're about to go to, to medical school, dental school, pharmacy school, whatever school you're trying to st start, start, I would say figure out how best you study first before you buy any resource, right? Are you an audio person? Do you like to listen to things? Are you a visual person? Do you like pictures? Are you more so like, I have to do this to be able to comprehend it? Once you figure out what works, then you can try to add all of the study resources that I've like listed out or look for other things that will help you understand your material. Because if you want to go into like grad school and stuff, your GPA is important. It's important for you to understand everything. And one thing I'm realizing in medical school is that they're building on top of whatever I've learned in undergrad. So some of the things I learned in undergrad are still being brought up in medical school, but just in a broader, more deeper sense. And they add a lot more things to it, like they'll add medications and other processes. So understanding how you study is the best advice I can give to anybody that's out there who's like, I don't know where to start. Just figure out how best you study and move on from there. Okay, so extracurriculars. Um, I'm involved in a couple of things. Uh, so my extracurriculars in school, I'm on the medical student council. Basically, it's like undergrad, the undergraduate student council, but like for medical school. Um, I'm the diversity and inclusion chair. I do it all matters for diversity, inclusion, how to make sure that our curriculum is more diverse, um, we're learning things that are going to help us be better physicians. So that is what I do as diversity chair. Um, I'm also part of the Student National Medical Association. This is for underrepresented minorities in medicine, and I'm part of the secretary. So I take notes. I'm the vice president for White Coats for Black Lives and basically just how to improve and teach my fellow peers about representation and the health outcomes for Black people because we know as a society that there are certain risk factors that come due to racism because of like your skin tone and color. So just making sure that as physicians, we're being culturally aware, but also like having cultural humility to be able to acknowledge and help be the change we want to see. I also do content creation. I love creating content. It's like, like an outlet for me. It's also been very helpful because I've gotten to like help so many pre-meds and mentor so many pre-meds and create so many resources for pre-meds out there that I didn't necessarily have when I was an undergrad. So I love that. Um, doing mentorship is also like, it just comes to the content creation, being able to like mentor students and like talk to them and help them on their academic journey. I feel like as individuals, we can't do everything by ourselves. So we need to ask for help and allow other people to help us on this journey because we can't make it out by ourselves. Um, I also volunteer. Our school has this student run clinic called the Community Care Clinic. It's actually one of the largest run clinics in the United States for like student run clinics. Um, we help the people in our community. I'm in Ohio, so we help people in in our community. And it allows me to basically just see how as a student, because like sometimes as a student, you're learning about all of these diseases, but then you're like, okay, how do I apply this to real life? And it actually allows me to see how I'm able to apply this. Um, and it actually really, it, like, I feel happy being able to go out there and, like, help the people in my community. So it's been really good. Um, I also do research. I was able to publish a paper this past summer, actually, because I, you know, just looked for those opportunities. Another thing, closed mouths don't get fed. So, like, 
reaching out to professors and asking them if they have research that I can get on, especially in medical school. There's some specialties that if you want to match into like after residency, you have to do you have to be competitive. So the same way as when you're applying to dental school or pharmacy school, they want you to have volunteer hours. They want you to have mentorship research. You still have some of those um requirements to be able to match into a, a competitive specialty or a good specialty in medical school. Um, okay, so priority list, right? One of the things that helped me in undergrad was I would create, before I started every semester, I would create a goal sheet and a priority list. What do I want to accomplish for this semester financially, educationally? Do I want to get 3.5? Do I want to pass organic chemistry? What What do I want to accomplish? It allows me to go into my semester knowing what my end goal is, and it allows me to be able to work towards that end goal during the semester, right? So I would create my priority list, and then I'll create a to-do list. And a to-do list actually allows me to be organized because you want to maximize the time that you're spending studying so that you can have time to for other things outside of school. So when you create a to-do list for the day, you know, okay, I need to accomplish this and this and this, right? Whatever I don't accomplish in that day, I can push it to the next day, right? But if I'm able to accomplish all of those things and maximize the time that it uses, I use to accomplish those things, it allows me to have a lot more time for other things, right? It allows me to be able to do content creation, it allows me to participate in my extracurricular activities, to be able to mentor students, to be able to create more resources, to be able to volunteer. So having a to-do list allows you to structure your day and you can work on your day through that to-do list. And it's also very satisfying crossing things off from your to-do list. So I would definitely advise like creating a to-do list as well, right? And try to accomplish the most important things first. You're not gonna... Honestly, sometimes you're not going to be able to get everything done in a day, but you can ask yourself, what is the most important thing on today's list that I need to accomplish? And when you accomplish that, you can like give yourself that grace and that space to be able to take time for yourself as well, right? Um, another thing is like being organized, right? I try to stick to the same routine every single day. It changes once in a while, right? Or if it's like a busy week and I'm studying for exams, I may not. I may only work out twice a week, right? Just so I can have time to put towards studying for school. And then after the exam, I can go work out or I can go spend time with family or I can go out with friends. So by being organized and structuring my day according to how situations come up, that also allows me to also make time for things outside of school. Um, and then I also use my calendar, right? I put everything down on my calendar when do I need to do this? So for example, being on this webinar, it was planned, I believe like a month in advance. So it allowed me to like structure my day for today. Like, okay, I'm going to go to class after class. I know I need to be on here at one. And then after this time, I'm going to go to the library. I'm going to go study, eat lunch, do all of those things. Right. So having a calendar is really important. I like having a calendar. Some people buy like a little like planner, I, the reason why I like the calendar is because if I carry my phone or my laptop is there with me and I can just have it wherever I go. And then I also use the note app and I write the things I need to accomplish on there. Setting a reminder is very important, you know, on my phone, be it if it's time for me to um, go to a meeting, I need to be doing this or I need to have a doctor's appointment. All of those things, I can track those things, right? And allocating time as needed. Sometimes you're going to have to allocate, okay, maybe I need to put two hours towards studying because medical school is so busy and you're not going to get everything done in a single day, right? And so it's like by allocating my time, I'm like, all right, I'm going to spend, like I allocate one hour to doing my Anki cards, basically my Anki flashcards every single day. So after that hour is done, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go work out or I'm doing something else. Because if you have used Anki, you know those cards build up over time and sometimes you're not going to finish all the cards in one day. So just being able to allocate my time has been really, really helpful for me. And the important advice I want to give you is school always comes first, right? You are involved in extracurriculars. You're involved in other things outside of school. But if you're struggling with school, right, I want you to put a hold on those extracurriculars and prioritize getting your school grades up. Because the most important thing is 
you're there, you go to school for what? You go to school to get your degree, right? So if you're not accomplishing that, then there's a high possibility that you're probably going to get dismissed. You're probably going to repeat and you don't want that to happen. So when you feel like I'm like having a hard time balancing this, look at your extracurriculars. Do I need to take some time away from this? Do I need to cut down those times and those hours so I can put it towards school? Because you don't want to overload yourself. You don't want to fill your plate up too much that you don't even have time for yourself because it's going to lead to burnout. And when you're burnout, you're not good mentally, physically, and you're not taking care of yourself. And that could also impact your grades. So you want to do the best of your abilities to be able to maximize that. And then I think I would advise is get a tablet or an iPad. I got an iPad, I believe, during my last year of college. And it was really, it was really helpful because I don't I didn't have to print out papers. Everywhere I'm going, I take my tablet. I still use it right now in medical school. I can take notes on it. As long as I have internet and Wi-Fi, it can connect automatically. I can see all of the things. I've been doing rather to carrying like lots lots of books or papers in my book bag, which would also lead to like back strain. So those are something I would advise. Um, stress management, right? Like I said, medical school is stressful and busy and school can be draining in general. Like I remember being an undergrad and I'm like, I'm so ready to be done. I like during my undergrad, I was taking 18 credit hours every single semester so it was a lot so by the time I finished I was like I just need a break I'm not gonna go straight into medical school I just need time to de-stress reset so I can go into medical school feeling refreshed rejuvenated and ready to conquer the next four years of school so don't be scared of taking a break because your body needs it listen to your body if your body's telling you we need to take a break take a break because sometimes you may think like, oh, no, I'm just going to finish this little portion. Your your mind is not there. So any other time you're spending after your brain is timed out, you're wasting your time because you're not probably going to recall that the next day, right? Another thing is never pull an all-nighter. Get your sleep. Sleep is very important. You don't want to be in an exam struggling to stay awake because you're not going to be reading the questions properly. You're going to be trying to get out of there fast so you can go home and take a nap. So take do those things that you need to do don't try to like refuse yourself because your body is gonna is gonna show out right you're gonna eventually feel it it's gonna catch up to you um so things I do to distress is I work out I create content sometimes I even score on social media right I watch Netflix clean whatever brings me joy cooking so it's very important to have those coping mechanisms right to be able to like take care of yourself. So one thing I would do in college, you know, after I I was like, I need to take time for myself is after every like exam, every hard exam, or after we're done with like a class, right? I would treat myself to like a seafood bro, right? And this wasn't like an everyday thing. It was probably like a once every two months. But just by taking that little time out to be like, all right, let me treat myself let me stay at home, eat the seafood, watch some Netflix. It was very vital to my mental health. And it allowed me to like feel good. It allowed me to like take a break and take time for myself, which is very important. I know like you want to be there and grind out, but sometimes your body just needs rest and you just need to follow your body and listen to it because that is the best thing you can do for yourself it's it's not only going to reflect in your grades but it's going to reflect on how you feel as a person how well you're doing things instead of you just like doing it to get it done you're actually going to be doing the things you like another thing I would say is like I feel like as a pre-med a pre-health student a pre-dental student you're focused on like oh my goodness how can I build my CV to the best of my abilities to be competitive I would say focus on the things that bring you joy focus on things that you're passionate about because they can see that and they're going to see your passion. They're going to see if you're doing it to just check a box off if you actually like this thing. So when you direct your energy towards doing the things that you like, it's going to show in your application. And you want to focus on quality over quantity. So the things that you like. So if it's like you want to do one research project and you really like that research project and you're passionate about it, focus on doing that for four years, right? If you want to 
paint if you like painting focus on doing that because it doesn't just it shouldn't just revolve around school but try to do things outside of school so you can show whatever grad school you're applying to like hey I I can find healthy ways to cope with stress but I'm also a well-rounded student like I'm doing things outside of just school right I can maintain a good GPA I can have good scores but also take care of myself and also do things outside of school um okay so conclusion right um I hope this like session was very valuable to you and you got something out of it. Um, I feel like as a student, one of the main reasons why I've like been able to thrive is because of having those stress management in place, but also like having a good family support. That's another important thing. You want to surround yourself by people who are going to support you, people who are going to uplift you up. If there's anything negative, anything that's stressing you, cut it out right so and also just send setting boundaries and realistic expectations for yourself that's why like you have to create goals for yourself right goals that you can see and look at it and be like all right I'm making progress I'm not making progress maybe I need to take time a little bit more on this so those are like some of the things I would say has helped me to be able to be a successful undergraduate student and now being a successful medical student who doesn't just balances medical school but being able to have a life outside of medical school so like as a student the one thing I would say is prioritize your mental health find great study techniques that are going to allow you to maximize your study time that way you're not spending a lot of time studying but you can also take some of those times to put into yourself to put into extracurriculars and to like help you grow as a person, as an individual. So I hope this talk like gave you a little bit about my life, my a little bit about how medical school is. And if you have any questions and like how to balance it out and any more specific things you want me to touch on that I didn't touch on in this presentation, you know, please drop like your questions in the question Q and A session section. And I'm more than happy to answer all of those things. And I'm like super happy and excited that you guys like came to this. And I hope you found this valuable. Um, so if you would like to follow me on my social media platforms and see more of the content I make and I create, this is my Instagram. You can scan the QR code and it's going to take you directly to my Instagram. You can also follow me on TikTok as well. Um, but yeah, any questions if you guys have any Thank you so much, Sonia. This is valuable information. I'm not in school anymore, but I can definitely attest to um, just prioritizing self-care and how you show up in different settings, how that can make you a much better student in and outside of the classroom. We do have one question in the Q&A. How have your study techniques or strategies changed since undergrad? Um, honestly, they haven't changed as much. I would say my foundation has been the same. Like like I mentioned, like you have to figure out how best you study. So like when I started medical school, I actually used the techniques I've been using in undergrad to be able to start off medical school. I didn't just change everything or throw everything out. So they haven't changed as much. The basics are still there. The foundation is still there. I still write in a notebook to summarize things. I would say one of the things that have changed, has changed is, I've been doing a lot more practice questions. And the reason why I've been doing a lot more practice questions is I, you have to take so many quizzes and so many exams. So being able to learn how to take the exams, how to take the test, I would say is something that has been really beneficial. And I've like seen a major difference to like my performance in medical school versus like in undergrad. Um, I see another question. It says, do you read before classes? Honestly, I don't look at the slides before class. I kind of just go to class as a blank slate and just have everything like spoken to me and like poured into me. But what I do do is after lecture, I watch videos or you would say outside resources, basically resources that the school um, isn't, it isn't lecture. I watch those to see how well I understood the topic and it kind of solidifies those things that I've learned in class and then 
after learning those things, I try to follow up with like some practice questions to be able to do that. Um, how do you avoid getting distracted on social media or in Netflix? Um, so like I said, prioritization. Um, the one thing I understand is school is first, right? Social media is a fun activity, is a fun hobby. But if it's getting into the way of me performing in school and doing well in school, then I probably have to limit my time on it. So I'll just say prioritizing my time, prioritizing like what I'm spending time on, how to allocate times to the various things. But I have like I feel like I'm doing a good job of not letting it distract me. Um, When it's time to watch Netflix, I watch Netflix. When it's time to be on social media, I'm on social media. I also try to like create content beforehand. Um, It just allows me to be able to like, I know I don't have to spend a lot of time doing things. So for like exam week, is busy and I don't want to be like focused on creating content. So I'm probably not going to post as much when it's exam week or I'm just going to post the content that's already made and it's sitting in my drafts. So I think it's not been distracting. It's actually been a good stress reliever. Another benefit of it is, you know, getting to talk to you guys and like see how you guys are doing. But also it's kind of like a job, you know, it's like a side hustle. Medical school is also kind of like a job, treated like a nine to five. So it's like, I, you don't, you're not able to work. Some people do, but most medical students don't work. So it's been nice. It's like a little extra side income for me. So it's been good. Um, it's not that related to top of the health prerequisites I find necessary to take in medical school. Okay, so some prereqs. All right, so whatever school you're applying to, go to their website look at what they require before you can apply to that medical school, right? Some schools require different things. Some schools are not going to take pass, fail, or credit, non-credit for certain classes. So go directly to the school's website and like look for those. But they're just like the general prereqs that you have to take. It's like biology one and two, general chemistry, organic chemistry, biochemistry, Psych social, you have to take a math class, be it if it's biostats, pre-calc, or calculus. I never took calculus. My um, advisor was like, you don't need it. And I was like, all right, I don't want anything to impact my GPA. So I just took the classes that were required. So go to the school's website, look at their website to see if you, if there's a certain class that they require that you need to take, and then like go from there. How are you able to balance being involved with research and everything else? Time management skills, allocating my time to the different things I'm doing. Um, I would just say, like, it's actually, so coming from where I'm from, right? I'm from Cameroon. And back home, um, they, like, set you on, like, I went to a boarding school. So they set you on, like, a pretty tight regimen and a pretty tight schedule and it allowed you to be disciplined. So I really had the chance to, like, build being disciplined so for five years I was in the boarding school so like all of those techniques I learned back home and back in the boarding school I'm using all of those things now and those are the things that are actually helping me so just being able to manage my time and knowing like okay my plate is full I can't take any of this on so right now I'm not really doing anything new because I'm also like I have step one to take next year so I have to think about that so it's just like based on whatever season I'm in, whatever class I'm taking, I try to adjust my schedule to fit that, if that makes sense. Mm, regarding Anki, do you have any suggestions and tips on how to make an effective flashcard? Also, was using Anki easy for you because it looks pretty daunting for me to use even though I know. Okay. Um, Anki, okay, I'll answer the second question. Anki is free. You don't have to pay for it. Um, okay. Um, so... I didn't, so when I started first year of medical school, Anki was very daunting for me too. And I was like, it's not making sense. I'm not able to like use it. It was just boring, right? Just sitting there doing a bunch of flashcards was so boring to me. I would rather do practice questions than do that. So first year of medical school, I did not use Anki as much. I was making my own flashcards the first semester. And to make a good flashcard is you need to put as little information on it as possible because if the flashcard is too big, then it's like you're putting the entire lecture into it. So find a like key point that you want to get out of it and like ask yourself, 
what is that one thing that you need to answer that flashcard? So that would be like not putting a lot of information on the flashcard would be one thing, right? Um, second thing, using Anki, different classes in medical school, well, different classes are going to require you to use different resources. So for like our neuroscience unit, I used a lot of Anki because we had just started anatomy. I was like, I'm not going to be able to make as much flashcards as I want to. So that was like an easy way for me to be able to get the same amount of benefit from already made flashcards there, right? Right now, what I do to be able to allow me to manage and do Anki is I try to do it once a day for an hour. You know, when you open your Anki and you see all of those cards that you need to do, it's very daunting, but taking it in little chunks has been really helpful. So basically, you can just open your Anki and just do, like, just say, okay, I'm going to do it for 30 minutes, or I'm going to do it for an hour or two hours, and set that time, turn your timer on, set that time, and then after two hours, I think we lost Sonia. Is anyone else having trouble seeing her? Okay. We're going to give her a few minutes to come back. I, I assume she has issues with her internet. But in the meantime, if you're looking for opportunities or a pathway to getting clinical experience to beef up your resume or support your application to PA school or medical school. Advanced Clinical Training does offer fully online medical certification programs. Our most popular program right now is the Clinical Medical Assistant Program. And you can find more information about our certification courses at advancedclinical.org. I will put that in the chat if you want to check out any of our um, programs. The courses are not free, unfortunately, but we do offer scholarships, including um, our Labor Day sale. I will put a code in the chat for $400 off if you are interested in taking advantage of um, the Labor Day discount. But go ahead, Sonia. Sorry about that. Sorry, I don't know what happened. My computer just like died all of a sudden, but <laughs> no worries. Apologize. Um, what other questions were there? I think we covered all the questions, unless there are any more. Yeah. All right. I don't see any more, but I was sharing with the group that we do offer fully online certification programs for students who are interested in gaining clinical experience and direct patient care. Please check out the link I put in the chat for more information. And we are also offering a um, Labor Day discount. Please use Labor 400 or $400 off at checkout. I think one question just came through. Um, okay, so the one thing I wish I knew before studying for the MCAT, I would just say like I would have slowly started studying for it but based on my schedule there was a lot of things going on but the one thing I did I wish I knew before taking the MCAT was just to like do more practice questions even if I wasn't planning on taking the MCAT in like a year or two do more practice questions like in medical school I've been doing practice questions since my first year of medical school right so it's like I've gotten so used to, to doing practice questions and how they're asking the questions that is allowing me to do well in medical school. So I would have started doing questions just a little bit, you know, doing a little, maybe like two biochem questions a day or like doing a cars question or phys um, physics or chemistry, but practice questions are really, really beneficial. So the one thing I wish I knew would start do, doing practice questions a lot earlier because it allows me to be able to see one, how the questions are being tested, but also figure out my weak points if I have to go and like study more on a certain topic before I actually like go into like studying for the MCAT fully. 
how do you manage your time as a student because it's really difficult to jump to an extracurriculars in school as well as project. Um, one of the ways I manage my time is just by allocating my time, right? So in the morning, I know I'm going to lecture. After lecture, I'm studying for maybe like three to four hours and then working out. So having that set schedule and that set routine, it allows me to like allocate my time in the day. But let's say if I have, if I'm like, okay, I need to volunteer this Thursday, right? I would try to front load that week to know like, okay, I have to volunteer if I have to do research or maybe just doing one hour of research. Or if you have to like travel or go somewhere for a conference, you're able to front load everything you need to do during the week earlier compared to like, waiting after the the conference to like try to study everything in one day um another thing I would say is like do not procrastinate if I'm like I need to get work done I like lock in put my phone away and get the work done because when you procrastinate it piles everything up and then when it's the last minute you're like I need to get all of this done you're stressed out and that could decrease your chances of like doing well later so just like Time management, using a calendar to track your days, having a priority list, having a to-do list for that day to be able to like move from one thing to the next. Um, this might not be a very good question, but where can you find practice questions when studying? So in medical school, our school actually gave us a resource. So during my first year and now second year, they gave us osmosis. So I didn't have to pay for that membership it kind of came out of my tuition, but that was where I was able to find the practice questions that I was using and doing. And then MedBullets has practice questions that I do. Those are free. Um, and then this year they gave us Scholar Rx, and that was free too. So the school has been providing that, but I know in undergrad you probably don't have that. So you can find one resource that helps you to be able to like find practice questions or you can also just maybe like, hey, I'm going to invest in one resource and pay for this resource so that I can like use it. Right. So you just have to figure out how much do you have to spend for it and like what fits your budget to be able to like get those practice questions. But and then there are also deals out there like Labor Day is coming. There's going to be a Labor Day sale. So like finding those deals and discounts to be able to get it done. What's the difference between Anki and practice questions? Okay, Anki is more so flashcard based. So I'm sitting at the computer um, and there, there are flashcards and I'm clicking on the flashcards and answering those little flashcards and moving forward. Practice questions is you're getting a question, you have an answer choice. So most of my exams are um, multiple choice questions. So you have a question, they ask you, they give you a set of findings. Patient comes in, they're this year old, they present with this. And then you have answer choices in the bottom. And now you have to choose which answer is correct. So I would say the difference, Anki is more so flashcards, while practice questions is like actual questions that you're getting to answer. So like, that's the difference. Um, how many hours a week do you commit to research and extracurriculars and medical school? It depends on the week. So like this week I had a meeting for the curriculum that I'm sitting on as diversity chair. And then I also had, so the meeting was like one hour and then I had an org fair. So I like spoke to the org, the other people on the, the council and I was like, hey, I'm only gonna be here for like this certain number of time. And I have to leave at like six to go to the meeting. So also communicating with other students and like other the other people that are in your, in your org to let them know like, hey, I'm probably not gonna be able to make this. This is my schedule or this is the time that works for me. But we usually try to set it around the time that works best for us. So kind of put it at, so to find time, figure out the things that work based on your schedule and plan it around that. How do you manage courses and prepare for you as Emily? All right, so right now I'm not really as heavy into preparing for it our school gives us a dedicated time period to like prepare for US Emily and that is in February. So February, they give us about six to eight weeks to like study and take the exam. Right now, what I'm just doing is 
doing five practice questions a day to be able to get me in that routine. And then I try to review the question. So if I miss a question, I created a spreadsheet where I would go on that and write the topic, what I missed and look for a video that I can watch and to be able to answer that. So that is how I've been managing, preparing for that with classes. But school comes first. So when we have a final or a quiz coming up, I focus more on that and kind of put that on a back burner. Um, what do you wish? What do you wish you'd have known prior to applying to medical school? Something that could have helped. Um, one thing I would say is applying early. A lot of people are applying to medical school right now. So it's like the applications is a lot, right? So try to get all of your stuff done, your MCAT, your extracurriculars, have your application and submit it as early as possible. I submitted my application in June and that took like a month for it to get verified, right? And I was talking to my friend who's applying now, right? And she said she submitted her application around the first day it opened up, around that first week. And it's been months and her application just got verified in, literally in August. So like a lot of people are applying to medical schools. So applying earlier would have like helped a lot more. Um as someone that actually got into university and is now a medical medical school, what advice do you have for high school students that want to go into the medical field? Like what extra curriculum do you want to recommend? Okay, for high school students, right? If you're interested in going to the medical field, I would say shadow, shadow as much as you can. If you're the med if you're interested in going to medical school, right? Shadow physicians if you can. I know it's it's a lot harder to get shadowing as a high school student as a pre-med student compared to being a medical student. So I would say shadow as much physicians as you can, but you can also start like being involved in like certain clubs. Try to get as much volunteer hours right now to be able to like help down the line because they're going to look at all of those things, right? So if you start volunteering right now, maybe you're volunteering at church you're volunteering as a patient transport or you're just being there, like taking care of people's loved ones if they're about to pass away. You can do all of those things in high school, right? And then if if you want to take college credit classes, you can also do that. But the only reason I would say, like, be careful if you're taking college credit classes in high school is because that actually counts towards your actual GPA when you're applying to medical school. So if you are not paying as much attention to the classes and you're doing poorly, that's going to affect your GPA. So volunteer, shadow, and just participate in activities that you like. If you see a problem that you want to fix, you know, you can create a club to help with that. But I would say don't worry as much about applying and going into medical school right now. There are also programs out there that allow you to get like an early acceptance. So you apply to that program and then you also apply to the medical school and you get accepted into their medical school based on like contingencies. So if you meet all of the requirements, you are going to matriculate. So you can also look into programs like that to be able to help you um, set yourself up for like success in um, to be able to get into medical school because it's getting super competitive. But those programs are very rigorous. So if that's not something, if you're unsure about going to medical school, I wouldn't say go through that route. All right. Thank you so much, Sonia. I know we are at time, so we will take one more question. Right. Did you shadow physicians? If yes, how did you proceed to get shadowing? Yes, I did shadow physici uh, like physicians when I was in undergrad. I would say just emailing them, you know, moles. Most physicians have your like emails online, like their work emails I, and phone emails that you can reach out to them. So reach out to them, send them a, a message and be like, hey, I'm this, I'm in this journey and this process. So I'm like an undergraduate student and I'm really interested in this and I would like to shadow you to see what you do as a physician. I know some schools have like direct programs that they have as requirements for their students. So you can also reach out to your admissions counselor to see if they have something like that at your school, but just reaching out to them and just asking them because it doesn't hurt to ask, right? All right. Thank you so much, Sonia, for all the information you shared. I hope that you all have 
gotten at least one tip to support you in your academic journey. As I've put in the chat, if you're interested in job placement, clinical experience, we do offer fully online certification programs specifically for pre-health and pre-med students. So please check out our website that I included the link in the chat. Hope you all have a good long weekend. Enjoy Labor Day, and we hope to see you in the next webinar. Thanks so much. No problem. Thank you for having me, guys. Jenny, did you want me to stay on the call? No, you don't have to. I'll send you an email. All right. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye.